couple of versions of uh, the, the Mongo just to show you some of the differences and the way it could be. So let me maximize this. And instead of going here, let's go to Canvas. Although South Falls at Silver Falls State Park in Oregon might be fun. Um, canvas. Do you guys have any questions or anything while I'm getting in here? You guys been doing anything fun? Drink. I don't do that much anymore. If you get older, it hurts more. <laughs> All right, 220. And what I did is in files, there's a couple of files that we're going to do. Um, so this is in the canvas under files. And you might see that there's a, there's a couple of things here, uh, sample JSON, but let's do, there's a show tracker JSON text. So this is the way I used to do it, and we're going to do this, and then we'll do the way I think is actually more like the way a NoSQL file would do. One, we're going to have to download this. If you copy and paste from Canvas, it'll fail. Uh, it puts characters in there that aren't just text characters. But when you look at this, what I did is I created a venue collection, and then I created some venues. And then I created a fans um, collection. And then I created uh, a shows collection. And then I created an artist collection, right? <clears throat> I think that in my mind, when I was doing this, I was still thinking too much like a relational database and breaking it all up into tables, basically. There are some differences. Uh, for instance, like under the artists, they can, I did put arrays in here, like they can be, you know, for genres, there can be an array of genres that belong to each artist. Um, and also under the fans, they can have an array of, uh, you know, of artists and an array of uh, genres that they like. Does that make sense? So it's not strictly like a, re a relational database, but it's still closer than maybe should be. I'm going to download this. And as I said, we'll play with it for a bit, and then I'll show you the other version that I have that I think is more realistic for a NoSQL database. Um, you could just open. Hopefully, it'll open a notepad. Is it? Come on. Oh, yeah. Notepad is down here. Okay. So I'm going to minimize the web page for a moment. I'm going to make this a lot bigger. That's a lot bigger, but I don't want to put word wrap in it necessarily. Uh, the reason being that the break the line character can screw things up. So we did uh, Mongo. I don't know if the database is running automatically. Let me just, I'm going to do use. Is that big enough or do you need bigger? Okay. Can you see it from the back? Everybody's okay. Okay, so I'm going to do use show tracker. And remember that creates, uh, brings us into show tracker. Now, did I, uh, did I put anything in this last time? We did a test one last time, right? I'm going to 
on the web page. I'm going to open up another thing, which I may need. I'm going to look for MongoDB documentation. Because it's useful. Like one of the things that I want to do is search for um, show databases. And I think there is a database commands get. I think it's like admin, admin command. Let me try this. Probably DB. This will probably fail. Yeah. List collections, list databases. I just want to see what databases I've got on here. Admin command list databases. And I'm going to cheat. Oops, wrong one. So if I paste, um, so I have admin config local and test. That's all I've got right now. Notice that it puts, it's really kind of, I don't know why it's so bright on there, even with uh, that better. <clears throat> <clears throat> so even notice that the, the query here is basically JSON, and then you give it a, a command colon, and one just means true, one, um, one zero, right, for things that are Boolean. And here it gives us a list of the databases. It gives us the name, how big they are, and whether they're empty. Now, it didn't actually show show tracker because I haven't done anything in it yet. But we've got test, which we did last time. Local is always there. Uh, config is always there, and admin is always there. Those are the sort of the system databases. If I show you how to do security in here next time, you do it in admin. I will rehearse it before I do it for you because a couple of times I've locked myself out <laughs> to where I couldn't get back in again. So that's a command for that. So what I want to do, so we're in show tracker. I'm going to do DB. Wish there was a way I could probably push this up a little. You sure that's big enough? <clears throat> All right. If you guys can see it, my eyes are worse than your guys, as I'm sure. <laughs> so I'm going to do DB dot, and what we'll do is venues dot insert. So we're going to create a collection. And I am going to just copy from this uh, parentheses down to this parentheses. And it goes over quite a ways, right? It doesn't have to be in this format, and the next one won't be. But a couple of things that are happening here. Um, So these are the beginnings and ends of the statement. The square brackets means that we're doing an array. So we're entering an array of objects. And those objects will each be uh, their own object in this collection. So you can do this is one way to enter multiple objects at once. So I'm going to control C. And then uh, if I right click here, it inserts everything. 
Why, I don't know. It may not work this way on a Mac or somewhere else, actually. But in the, in the command line, it does that. And then if I press Enter, it tells me, it gives me, again, a JSON object as a result. And there's uh, an empty array of errors, an empty array of right concern errors, and inserted for it didn't upsert or match or modify or remove. These are all different things that could happen, but it's just inserted for. So that's what you want. And one of the things you can do is if I do uh, db dot venues dot find. Um, it will show me all that I just entered. And you can also do, if you prefer, dot pretty. Did I show you that before? And it will show you all of the records in a little bit more readable form. So that's dot pretty. Comet doesn't do music anymore, I don't think. <laughs> I will show you also how you can search for one, and then we'll add some more stuff. So if I wanted to see only the uh, arena or only Paramount, let's do arena because it's in the middle. I could do db.venues.find and then do a curly brace. And in this case, it's the uh, I gave it an ID rather than let it give it an ID. Colon uh, arena. Close the curly brace. Close that. And actually, let me just do it again, but with dot pretty. The way I get the command back is I just do the up arrow. So a query, again, it's just you just search for the, the pair, the name value pair. You can get a lot more sophisticated. You can do greater than, less than. You can do aggregates. You can do all sorts of things. But this is sort of the basic query where you're looking for a single value. You inserted it into the database. How did you do that? Did you just you just copy and paste those? I did. I just copied and pasted. In fact, I'm going to do it again with the next one. So what I did, uh, so this is fans. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say um, DB, which is the current context, fans, which will be the name of the uh, collection, insert. Now, I have the parentheses and everything here, so I'm just going to Copy from there to that parentheses. That shows. I want just fans. Uh, they won't work if you try to copy them all as a single script. Ah, come on. <laughs> there are problems with being so zoomed. All right. So I copy. So I'll just do that. And then when I go here, actually all I have to do is right click. If that fails, um, you can go up here and do edit, paste. All right, now they aren't inserted until I press enter down here. And again, so if everything works well, uh, then it, it says it inserted six. Now I'll tell you a couple of things about doing these. Like I'm going to have you do a couple of inserts and things. It is a pain in the butt to get every curly brace, every colon, every comma in the right place. <laughs> and even one missing comma or one missing, you know, curly brace or one something just out of sequence and it'll all fail. Yeah. So if we inch up five, we recommend laser. You know, so I'm going to just do, you can drop this if you want. There is a thing where you can do DB drop, uh, drop database. Or you can um, 
just name it something different. So like this is Show Tracker. I'm, I'm going to make another Show Tracker. I'm going to call it Show Tracker One and Two. So I mean, you could just name it a different, slightly different, too, if you wanted to keep both of them. So this is just putting data in here for the most part. And then I'm going to, um, we'll do the shows. And then we'll do a few queries of these. And then I'll show you the other way. So this is all case sensitive. Right, so like if I did a capital I on insert, it would fail because it's all case sensitive. Typically, the commands, the first word is lowercase, and if there's more words kind of built into it, they're camel case after that. So lowercase, the next, like uh, way up at the top where we did admin command, uh, where we look in what databases we had. It has a lowercase a, but a capital C. So that's typically how, because there's two words really in my admin command. So each new word starts with a capital letter. That's the normal uh, naming convention in Mongo. So I'm going to insert the shows. And then, as I said, we'll do some queries. Uh, and then I get all the artists. And again, the way things would normally enter a database like this is probably not this way. With You would probably pull them in from um, the web, or you would pull them in through forms, things like that, the way a normal database would bring in the data. And you would have to write some code that takes what comes from the form and turns it into JSON or something. It's not as hard as you would think, because most Languages have um, basically a built-in libraries that take data and put it into a JSON form. Most databases can also ex ex both import and export JSON. You know, it's, it's a really common way of moving data around on the web. I think one of the reasons why NoSQL uses it is that most web developers know JavaScript. And it, it's uh, JavaScript is becoming the de facto language of the web. Uh, annoying as that is. <laughs> so, in fact, if you do, there's a real common uh, platform which is. Let's see if I can remember what the initials are, but it uses Node JS. Ever, Node JS is a Java server side Java which Java is usually, not Java, JavaScript. JavaScript is usually uh, limited to the web page. But with uh, Node, you can run it as a server site. It actually becomes more like a real programming language. And it uses Mongo for the database. And it uses some other platform. So do you know what I'm talking about? You look like you might know. <laughs> um, yeah. There's, there's an acronym for it, uh, for the Node and Mongo and um, whatever the other two JavaScript platforms that are being used in it. It's a web development platform. It's a stack name? It's a, it's a stack. There's a stack. It is one of the stacks. But it's like mean and burn. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what. It might be mean. Mongo. Mongo, Express. Express. Angular. Angular and Node. Uh, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, so I mean, all right, I'm going to then do the artists, and then we're, we have all these inserted. So db artists.insert, and as I said, we're doing this one partially because I already have the script. But I think it's a little bit too relational in its setup. And I have another one we'll look at in a moment. Okay. 
And if we were to look, um, I, as I said, I don't usually use it much. Um, if we were to look here, not there, at the compass thing. This is the front end, although it's taking forever. It would be harder to load these in here, actually. Come on, I want to zoom in. I guess control plus does it. Not much. We're supposed to zoom it. It's not. Oh, it's control shift plus. It's not working either. What? Say control, control plus shift plus equal. Oh, control shift equal. Oh, I have to find my equal. Control. Oh, yeah. All right. I just wanted it big enough so you could see it. Notice it has show tracker. If I click on show tracker, you can look at. Now we have artists, and I can, you know, it'll show the artists there. You can put them in a table form, although when you get into an array, notice it just gives you uh, the brackets. And I don't know if you can um, see them or not. It's not actually letting us see them. So when it has an array, it just gives you brackets. It says that there's two elements in it. If you do it in a list, uh, then it shows, actually it just says an array. All right? There's a drop down arrow to the left of the genre. Oh yeah, so then you can do it. <clears throat> so I don't know. I mean, as I said, these are, and then when you get into deeper embedding, it gets a little bit more, com, you know, convoluted too. And to add these, it's it's a bit of a pain too. So <clears throat> I was looking at documents. That's what we got. The view is a list or a table, but I would really like to see them. They used to have the option of actually looking at them as J JSON. But it's not here. This is this can be useful for like looking at the data when you want to see it in a real quick way, right? Um, I mean, you can always get the data from here, but this sometimes is faster and easier to look at. If I go to here, I mean, if I want to see, um, I could look at DB. Let's do fans dot find and uh, that will give me all the fans and again if I want to do it dot pretty it will give them to me like that looking a little bit more like the JSON so let's do a few queries of the data that we've got and then we'll look at a, the different ways of organizing it is this making sense? It's very different in its way than a relational database, but it is a database because it is storing data, right? And it's a da storing data that allows you to get it out, allows you to do things with it. In this thing we downloaded, I actually gave some um, queries, which you can copy and paste, or we could do type them in. So this is to find all the fans who like of Monsters and Men. I'm going to copy that, paste that. Notice that it has, just in the query, we're just looking for the artist. One of the neat things about 
uh, of monsters and men as artists is that, I mean, it, it's an array. Most of these are an array of artists. They just say we've got one artist in that array. Um, but it, it will find in the array. You don't have to loop through the array or do anything like that. It'll look into the array and see if there's a match. So let's do it again with pretty. OK, so all of these fans have of Monsters and Men, who I don't think it produced an album in like six years. <laughs> but they're uh, all, you know, all of these fans have that in there. <clears throat> Does that make sense? So you can search, even though it's in an array, it'll match the value. And again, if you just look at the pattern of that, artists, and, and we can make more complex ones, we'll do that in a bit, in a minute. It's different than SQL. Weirdly, though, you can buy front ends to Mongo that will allow you to run SQL queries against the SQL, the NoSQL database. So if you were really good at SQL, you could buy that front end, and you could treat this as if it were an SQL database to some extent, which is, I haven't played with that, but I think would be a little weird. All right. Now, this one does a little bit different. Let's see if I can. One of the things is you notice that we're seeing everything, right? Um, in, in the record. What this one does is it's asking for fans who follow artists, monsters, and men, but we don't want to see everything. We just want to see their name, their email. Now, the ID. Zero. The ID always shows unless you explicitly say no. So most of the fields, if you don't, if you have this second set of brackets separated by a comma, if you don't explicitly name a field in here, then it assumes zero except for the ID. So in this case, when I do that, and I'll add pretty to it. I'm just getting their name and their email, right, for each of them, just their name and email. So I'm only seeing the fields that I want to see. This would be useful if you were, uh, we were, there were going to be a concert and you wanted to pull up a list of everybody that might be interested in email, then that it's coming up, right? Does that make sense? So let's see what I have next. That's the same. Oh, this is to find the shows that have artists and men, or monsters and men. Oh, that's the same one I just did. That's not what I want. <laughs> It may not still be there. There it is. So this is searching shows instead of, um, and let's do it pretty, because it's not very readable the other way. So there is one show that's supposedly coming up. Now, a couple of things about uh, that I think are a, kind of a drawback of this. So if I wanted to say I pulled up this show first and I wanted to pull up the fans, I have to do separate queries. There's no way to join it, right? You could uh, otherwise, there's, just, there's no joins, there's no way that this table relates to fans or other. You just have to do separate queries. 
I mean, that, that's part of why they're fast because they don't have lookups and relations. <laughs> but it's still kind of a pain because you have to do more queries. So then I was going to look for people that want. So we're going to look for artists. Okay, so first we're going to do fans. We're going to look for artists that are alternative. Um, and I'll do pretty. So I have for artists, I have, and you could argue these, I suppose. I have Death Cap for Cutie, of Monsters and Man, Lord, Daughter, Metro, and Pearl Jam as alternative as one of their things. So those are all people that are alternative. And then I was looking to see which fans are looking for alternative. And I'm only going to return their names and email. I don't know if pretty matters here. So we got these people are ones that are look for alternative rock that like alternative. So we're finding which artists and which genres kind of go together. So is this making sense? I'm going to have you do a little bit when we do it just to get a feel for it, but not a lot. Now this is a little bit different. So we are looking for all the shows basically by alternative uh, artists. And how do we know they're alternatives? We have to do the lookup up above. A couple of things about this. Notice that there's DB shows find, and then there's a dollar sign or. That says, it, it, it's basically like a, an or that says, return it if the artist is of Monsters of Men or Death Cap for Cutie or Pearl Jam, or Daughter, or Metro. So the or is sort of hanging over this whole array of things. And so in each case, we're looking for that artist. And this artist is coming from shows. So we're looking for shows by those artists. The other thing that will drive you nuts if you're doing this is that these are case sensitive. So if I spell these differently than they are in the uh, underlying database, they may not come up. And let's do pretty again. So these are the shows. We have a Monsters and Men and we have a Pearl Jam show. I don't know if Pearl Jam has ever does the Paramount. They're more likely to do an arena. <laughs> but... This is the most complicated one we did. If you look at the documentation, you can do any kind of query you can imagine, pretty much. But they, some of them are a bit complex. To me, SQL is a more natural language for it. But uh, you can do this. I mean, you can do it with this. So how are you guys doing? Yeah. Can you do like calculations with those queries? You can. Um, do I have anything to calculate though? Like how many fans you have on database? Like um, older than 21. I think we can like do. Yes, you can do that. I might have to look it up. But let's do DB fans find. And what I don't know is if this works. Let's try that. Six. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think you can do, uh, so let's do, something similar to that, but let's in the find put a criteria. Um, so it was genre, right? Uh, 
I'm trying to remember what's in fans. Uh, genres. And then it was alternative, and I think it was caps, right? Yeah, and I'm looking up here just to see. Okay. So let's see how many we have. Okay, and then I need a curly brace. Let's see if it'll show how many uh, fans are following alternative. And five of them are. So, yeah, you can do that kind of counting. Then. Yeah. Uh, can you do like subtraction or addition or multiply? Like, you can. Add what? Adding all the times together to get a total time. Uh, I don't know. Maybe if I'd done the times as an actual time, I think it's just a string. <laughs> can you just put, put string on the state of it? What do you mean? Because on like every single <clears throat> field is like string, there's no int. So there are some things, like notice ISO date. Um, and if you do a number, I don't know that we have any numbers in here. But you can do things like uh, average and uh, total, and you can add and subtract if you have numeric fields. The difference between a numeric field is usually that it's not quoted, although I think it can be quoted. If it is a number and it's quoted, I'm pretty sure you can cast it to a type. But it is not typed strict the way a relational database is. Basically, everything is a string, and then you can convert it if you need to. The other thing that uh, you usually don't do in these, uh, weirdly, because they have so much social media stuff, is you usually don't post pictures or anything like that in there. You just post a link to the picture. Does that make sense? Whereas in a relational database, you have a choice. You can actually store the picture in the database, or you can store a link to the picture. Uh, you have that choice. But here, it's because pretty much everything is a string. So basically, you do links to that. I, Let me do, um, I have, if I go to the web, remember I showed you the um, Conger prep blog spot? I'm going to steal the database from there. All right, not that. So let's go to – so what I have here is a list of products, and the thing is that they do have number values. So they have prices, and they have uh, quantities available and things like that. Uh, and I gave them my own IDs rather than my previous IDs. Um, so let's do, I, I'll create a new, oh, go into a new database. And then we can try doing some queries there. So I'm going to do uh, use, let's just call it products. Okay. And then I'm going to um, db. Product uh, collection, I'll call it product collection dot insert. And I think I can from here we'll see if it fails. That looks pretty good. I need a shoot. Will it let me go up? No. All right, this is going to fail. Um, let me just do that. Okay. No. That's what I wanted. No, I don't want that either. DB. 
uh, products collection dot insert. The problem was it didn't have the parentheses, and I needed to put the parentheses in there. So I'm going to copy these. Oh, he's going to the wrong one first. I'm going to paste that, and then I'm going to close the parentheses, and then it inserted 10 records. So there are things you can do. Um, let's say we want db.productsCollection. Actually, it's products collection. Dot find and I'm going to do let's see if I can do this right I may have to look it up let's look at for uh, price colon um, and then I'm going to do another curly brace dollar sign GT for greater than and our prices go out from let's say we want a price greater than 500 so I'm going to do greater than 500 curly brace curly brace parentheses dot pretty don't know if that'll work it didn't so why did that not go Let me look at my queries here. That's an update. I don't want to do that right now. Set calculations. Product. That's an aggregate, right? Product one, price one, quantity available one. There's an average price. I could try to do that. Well, so we've got the Mongo documentation up. So we got at max at expression. I wonder if I need that. I've done this before, but it's been a while. I think that might be the difference. Uh, let's try that. Although, where was the expression going? It's going before everything. I think this is where you're trying to get spent greater than budget. But I just want to get greater than a number. I think that might be, let's look at that. Um, instead of greater than, uh, so I think what I need is a colon, another curly brace, uh, and then I need to say, actually, I'm just trying to look at that. I don't want to see where it, so I think this would be the what I want, right? Yeah. 
except with um, 500. Don't you like watching me flounder here? Okay, so let's see if I got BB products collection dot find. And it's probably not still there. Nope. Ever stays. All right, so we don't have spent, but it would be price. And then here, I'm going to just do 500 instead of the. I'm going to put it in quotes just to see. All right. Is that right? Did I lose some any curly braces or anything? Two, one, two, one, two. I think we need one more curly brace at the end here. And then the parentheses. Still didn't give me anything. Let's take the quotes off 500. Hey. <laughs> So we got the ones, the prices that were greater than 500. Took me forever to do that. I'm sorry, <laughs> but um, again, it's it's not necessarily that intuitive, and you probably need to spend some time. We're telling it that it's an expression that we're actually doing some kind of math, and GT is, as you would guess, greater than. All of the functions, basically, these kinds of math functions, the things have the dollar sign in front of them. Um, this is a variable that stands for the price field. I don't know how. It's always like that. It's a dollar sign plus the name of the field. And we're saying we're comparing which is the greater, is the price greater than 500. First one failed because I quoted it, so I treated it as a string. Uh, this one about, and then I credified it. And so we've got three products that are greater than $500. So the short thing is, yes, you can do almost anything you want. It just you might have to spend some time, like I just did on the documentation, trying to figure out the exact syntax. I did do more. I was just looking at my blog. What I did is I spent more time on the aggregates, like the average and the. The difference between the aggregates and the final. So an aggregate is is basically like average or like sum, where it's doing multiple values at once. Um, whereas these are just dealing with uh, comparing row by row or record by record, right? So they're not, an average would be like, what is you know the average price of, uh, brain gun, of a product. <laughs> Are there other things you want to look at number-wise? I mean, we could play with that. One of the things I think I might like you to do is just because the assignment is basically to kind of come up with your own version of a show tracker. Uh, but you can do, if you wanted to do something other than a show tracker, you could. And again, the uh, documentation isn't bad. Typically, what I do is I just click on uh, search documentation. I type in what I'm looking for. And typically, I find it fairly well. The Mondo do documentation is actually pretty good. That being said, you do have to have some vague idea what you're searching for. <laughs> and that can be you know, an issue. But you can also do over here in the documentation, um, they have 
when you get down to reference, they have different operators, uh, commands, you know, and basically they have a list of things here that you can um, look at that give you a little bit more. Like if you did uh, aggregation pipeline operators, I'm not sure if that's. So you have arithmetic expression, array expressions. They have lots of different things that you can do. Absolute, add, ceiling, divide, floor. You know, lots of different math functions and things you can apply. Let me real quickly just show you the show tracker two, and then I'll let you guys kind of work on things. So in the uh, canvas under files, so I'm going to go back. I'm not there. I just want to show the files. Close. All right. So there's another one which I called Show Jack Tracker JSON 2. And just as an overview, I made this a lot more embedded, and I think it's the way that these things mostly are. So I did these venues. So I did like Jazz Alley. And then I did shows for the venues inside the same record. And then I did reviews for the shows in the same record. Uh, and then another show, Tacoma Dome. And, uh, you know, basically some shows and reviews. And then the Paramount. And the Paramount doesn't have any reviews. And then I did a few fans. So it's a little bit different than the... Um, the other structure. It's a little bit more embedded, fewer collections, but it's actually fairly typical of how the no relational databases that I've seen are. Again, you have to download this, and then I'll open it. Uh, it won't copy from Canvas properly. So, Show Tracker 2, I'll make the font bigger. I'm not going to make it quite as big as the other one, just because it's going to be a pain to copy. So here, I'm going to um, switch it out. So I'm going to say use show tracker 2. So it's a new database. Um, and then I'm going to copy. This one I did the whole insert statement. So I'm going to go all the way down to there, just before fans insert. So I'm going to paste. And it actually ran, and it inserted three venues. And I'm going to show you how to query inner objects a little bit. Um, and then let's do the fans. And you guys can do this, too, if you want to play with them. As I said, I this is a little bit. I'm doing it a little different than last time because I think it's uh, – I'm not sure how – I did it last time that I, I just didn't care that much for it, I guess. So I've inserted five fans. Now, if I wanted to see a show, you know, how would I do that? Right? Because shows are inside the venue. So you have the venue, and then you have the show. Um, It could be a little, you know, if you did show to all the venues, it would show all the shows. If you show the venue, it would bring the shows back too. But if you only wanted to see the show, so let's say I only wanted to see the show with Neil Young. See if I can do that. 
db dot venues dot find now in the shows is it shows yeah no it's in Sherpa's plural let me do a um, quotes shows uh, dot uh, let's say sh uh, artist show name should be jumpsuit and artist 21 pilots but anyway let's do um, artists colon and I'll do Neil Young curly brace See if it works. So it it, it should show me the one with uh, Neil Young. It did return it, but it returned the whole object. Right. So you you could, in your parentheses again, just decide which ones you really want to see, which I might do next. Notice how I did that. Shows is an outer field of that thing. And then it has an inner object, so shows dot, and so this this artist belongs to show inside of that. And then I gave it a value, and then so it gave me the whole object back, but it, it did include the show to you know, the young Does that make sense? This can be kind of fun if you play with it. it you know, if you're just let's see if we can limit the fields. Um, so that we don't see everything. So I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to oh, okay. come back here and do a comma, and I want to do um, shows dot uh, show name. Close the quote, colon one, and shows dot artists, which needs to be in quotes. And uh, we probably would also want the venue name. So I'm going to do, actually, that needs a colon and a one. And then I'll do the <laughs> with the venue. Is it name? Just name. Let's see if that works. No guarantees. And it should return. I would probably also want the show date. Should return the show name, the show artist, and the name should be the venue. A, it did. So the name is the Tacoma Dome, and I'm just returning the show name and the show artist. Although I returned both shows, <laughs> the, the show name for both shows, right? Even though, even though it, this is showing the, this is showing the venue that has um, Neil Young, so what we would have to do is figure out how to do a criteria so it only shows that, which is I'm sure doable. But that kind of shows you how you can look inside the the objects inside of the objects. 
if that makes sense. There are some numbers you can do here. There are ratings. But I quoted them, so I'm not sure if it'll be math on them. Sorry, you might have to cast them to a number. Questions? This is a lot. I don't expect it to sink in necessarily. I just, the only point of doing this is to show you that there is an alternative to relational databases and it is gaining a certain amount of traction out there. Again, mostly for managing uh, web scrape data, but it can do other things. Yeah. The one that you had as the Boolean, why is that necessary in there? So the last one I did? Yes. I was trying to limit the fields that I was looking at. Right, so this is what we got before. We got the whole record, right, the whole object. Do we have its ID, the Tacoma Dome, we have all of that, which is fine, maybe that's what you want. But if you only wanted to see a couple of the fields, so what we're doing here is we're saying show the show name, show the artist, um, so this is the artist. Well, that's the show name, where are the artists, do they show? It's weird. I don't see the artist on my. I might have misspelled something. I bet it's artist. Artist, yeah. I left out the. Um, so if I come back. But basically, I'm just saying what I want to see. So the one means true, I want to see it. And the default is. If you do, if you add this right where you're saying what you want to see, anything you don't specify as wanting to see, it's automatically a zero. You don't want to see it, except the ID. The ID is always returned unless you explicitly say no. So with the artist here, and I should have now I have the artist as well. <laughs> Not that it matters. It's interesting, when I entered this, I was obviously tired because I put the title of the show where the artist should be in multiple cases. I spent, just a warning to you if you're doing, I spent hours cleaning up comma errors and uh, curly brace errors for this script to make it run in one shot. How do we eliminate the ID? So, so if I want, if I don't want the ID, just add one more template. yeah. So you just do another. Um, so let's bring it up again. I'm just going to do comma, uh, not period, comma, quote, underscore ID zero, and then. Um, Now there's no ID there. So you have to explicitly forbid it to show the ID. Otherwise, it will. Right? Yeah, this could be fun. I'm going, my intention is to play with it a little bit more. As I said, I do this stuff. I did it one time, but I lost it. Uh, Twitter, scrape Twitter. I'm going to try that again. Maybe it allows, I have a script that allows you to search for it terms it's not searching the database actually of Twitter it's searching only live tweets you know what I mean it's only searching what's current uh, they don't give you access to the database of their past tweets but you can gather like a, do say climate change uh, it gives you search term you can search for whatever terms you want and uh, you can get they do limit you how much you can take at a time uh, but you can get several thousand records fairly quickly. <laughs> so, what do you mean by current? It's like the, was there a time limit? Or? What's up now on the screen? Uh, okay. <laughs> As like opposed to going into the past. Or, yeah. I imagine they have a gigantic database. And I'd also imagine that it's something like this.
and it does. Um, so it broadcasts as JSON. Whether the native database is JSON or not, I almost suspect it would be, but I don't know for 100% sure. Facebook, you can get JSON too. Facebook has a weird database model. Some of it's relational and some of it's not. <laughs> um, so a lot of the actual feed is not, but a lot of your personal information is. Does that make sense? So that. Uh, account information is structured, but a lot of the uh, feed information is not. And they've been working on trying to get a database that can blends the two. <laughs> so, um, but they, they, I mean, it's really easy. These are really easy just for, as I said, they'll store a lot fast. Not a lot of work needed. It doesn't matter. One of the things that I tried to do here, it really doesn't matter if all of the records are the same. For instance, the Paramount, I don't have any uh, reviews. I have reviews for the others, but I don't have any for the Paramount. And that it's perfectly fine with that, right? The, the records do not have to be exactly the same, which they would have to be in a relational database. Now, you could put nulls for things, but... Here it just ignores, and you could add things. There could be one of these that has some feature that none of the others do, and that would be perfectly fine. All right, let's look at the assignment. And as I said, we're doing pretty good time-wise in this class, so we may actually have extra time. And I may do some for your information only things in the next few days, like uh, relational, I, the security for the different databases. It's a useful thing to do, but I didn't make an assignment out of it. But it would, you know, you might enjoy seeing it. If you don't, that's okay too, I guess. Uh, so let's go to the assignment. So I want to close this uh, assignments. And this is about the last assignments. And I'm pretty going to be pretty loose on these. Let's go to mo uh, modules, actually. What I would suggest, because we have fun, I mean time, have fun. My brain isn't working too well. So the first one is just to think about what the um, JSON, the structure would be that you would want to do for this database. I showed you mine. If you really want to just modify mine slightly, you could do that. Um, and all I'm looking for for this first assignment is notepad, right? Just how would you kind of a, how do you think you would want to design the, the JSON fonts? Doesn't have to be too elaborate, doesn't have to be perfectly typed or anything, but um, just, just to think about it, right? So how would you want to do it? And you could use my two examples and blend them or do something with it or Whatever you want. As I said, I'm going to be pretty loose. I just want you to kind of think about it. So a notepad with that. And if you want to do a notepad where you do like the field colon and not bother to put in the data, you could do that. Although if you put in the data, you could use it later. So the next assignment on this is just to um, – create the database. And one of the things that I would suggest um, if you create the database, and if you want to do something other than show tracker, you can, but show tracker is designed for you. you know, set up for you. Um, I would type them out like I did in Notepad. It's a whole lot easier to fix them in Notepad and then copy them over than it is to try to fix them in the uh, environment there. And that's somewhat true. I mean, if you really want to use a compass, you can, but it's a real pain to enter data in this. Oops. Um, like when you insert a document, it gives you this, and you have to go through and type each pair and give it a type. I mean, it's just a pain. It's doable, 
And it that means you don't have to be quite as careful about curly braces and traumas and things because it'll do some of that for you. But you, you just type in a field and then you type in a uh, value and then you do the next one, and then you do a plus for let me show you. So we're in the um, artist one. So let's do artist. Uh, trying to think of an artist. It's weird that I'd have trouble thinking of an artist when I've had thousands of CDs over the years <laughs> and records and albums. Um, what? It's been here. Connor. Say it again. You're saying that. Guns and Roses. Oh, Guns and Roses. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Oh. Why was I not hearing that? My ears are getting bad. And you could do these as caps. Um, now, when I do that, I can do a plus, and then it lets me go to another field. And I'll do genres. They're pretty much rock. Anything else that you would put on them? So, and then I can insert it. And it would be down here. Now, if it's a real simple one like this, that's not too terrible. But if you're doing a lot of embedding, it gets a little bit more complex. So if I were to do, let's go, this is artist. Let me do uh, Shows had a little bit of embedding, not much. Venues. It had a genres array, anyway. Um, you have to, when you're doing an inserted document, uh, one of the things you could do, let's say, I'm, I'm not going to insert this one, but over here you could do an array, and then it gives you the sub things. So it's doable. You could do it here. It's just, I think, more tedious. And if you want another object, a sub-object, instead of an array, um, you can come down and... Uh, come on. I'll just do it that way. You can insert an object. And so, I mean, it is doable. It's just more complicated. That being said, you may get frustrated enough with the curly braces and stuff to do it that way. OK, so for this one, um, all I need is like a screenshot of you know, the database with a collection. I don't care if you do every collection. So again, if you did something like um, dbmenus.find, uh, and then a screenshot of that, that would be perfectly fine for the create database and collections. And then the last one for this section, actually, let's go to modules, is just to do a couple of queries. And I think I gave some suggested queries. So entering some data. And then um, if you do something different, you know, like list all the club members. You know, that's my SQL. I want to go to <laughs> modules. Um, I gave you some, basically, you know, what genres, what artists are considered to be of that genre, what fans follow those artists, what shows exist for those artists. You can do these, but if you do different queries, that's fine, too. Yeah, I'm going to be real loose on this. I just want you to kind of explore it. And that's all of them except for the quiz. So I will give you for sure Monday uh, to work on this. Actually, yeah, it is Wednesday, so Monday. <laughs> and um, longer if need be. Because as I said, we have some time. We have like two and a half weeks left. You guys have any questions? So that's a lot. I don't expect this all to have sunk in. I will help. Question? Yeah. 
So if you go to Mongo to install it, just go to Mongo. Just search for MongoDB downloads. So there's a video for all of that. What I don't know, I think I just shut it down. I was going to copy, try to copy my screen. 